Hello, I'm Robert J. Morgan. Several years ago, I wrote a book entitled 100 Bible Verses Everyone Should Know By Heart. It's still in print and still selling in multiple languages, yet I am more passionate about scripture memory now than ever. Proverbs chapter 22 says, Pay attention and turn your ear to the sayings of the wise. Apply your heart to what I teach, for it is pleasing when you keep them in your heart and have all of them ready on your lips so that you may trust in the Lord. We all develop our own habits, but let me share how I memorize Bible verses. It's very simple. I don't try to memorize vast portions like entire books, and I don't worry about how long it takes to learn a verse or a passage. I just want to keep adding one phrase after another and one sentence upon another. First, as I read and study my Bible every day, I look for verses or passages I think I'd like to memorize. Second, I read them over and over, often aloud, until the phrasing begins to get into my mind. Third, I write the verse or passage out on its own page in a little loose leaf notebook. Mine is five and a half by eight and a half. Now here's where I exercise a little sanctified discretion. I grew up with the King James Version. Then I switched to the New King James Version, and then to the New International Version, and sometimes I even read from the Living Bible. Since I've memorized verses in all of these translations through the years, I write out the passage that I'm learning in the version that comes most naturally to me. Often, I combine versions in one passage, but I don't feel guilty about that. I simply choose the wording that comes most naturally to me, phrase by phrase. For example, when I quote Joshua chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, verse 8 is from the New King James Version, but verse 9 is from the NIV. When I quote Psalm 46, I weave in and out of about three different translations, but who would know it? When I quote it, no one seems to realize that I'm quoting from my own patchwork of versions, but this is the plan that works best for me. That's why a personal notebook is invaluable. It's my own amalgamated edition, but it keeps me from having to unmemorize and rememorize. Sometimes when I want to memorize a new verse, I check several different translations and print out by hand the verse in the version that I like the best. So this little notebook is my own personal collection of scripture memory passages, which to me is the most valuable collection of treasures that anyone could own. I keep the pages in canonical order from Genesis to Revelation, and every morning during my devotions I work for about five or ten minutes repeating my current memory project into the recorder on my phone, listening to it, seeing what I missed, and trying to do it again. Sometimes I'll get carried away and spend 15 or 20 minutes. Often throughout the day I'll see if I can remember these verses. When driving down the road, I practice them. By having all of my memorized passages in one notebook, I can review them often. I memorize and re-memorize and re-re-memorize them because I want to pound them into my long-term memory and be able to say them as easily as I rattle off my name, address, birthday, and phone number. Of course, you can replicate my notebook using your laptop or smartphone. I like having an actual notebook, but I do photograph the pages so I can travel with them easily and review them wherever I am. When we do this, it allows us to ponder God's Word day and night, as I describe in my book Reclaiming the Lost Art of Biblical Meditation. The habits of scripture memory and biblical meditation are the most important patterns of my life, and I urge you to work on your own patterns for weaving them into your daily schedule. Nothing will help you more in times like these. And if you are a preacher or teacher or worship leader, nothing is more helpful in terms of your platform ministry. Please check out 100 Bible Verses Everyone Should Know By Heart and Reclaiming the Lost Art of Biblical Meditation. I truly believe these habits will change your life at the deepest level of your mind and emotion. Let's hide God's Word in our hearts and in the hearts of our children.